Delighted to be joined by physiotherapist Christian Jolly. Christian, how are you enjoying your new role? Not thoroughly. Thoroughly, it's been great. It's been a it's been a challenge the first few months, um, trying to adjust to full time football and, and a few of the lads obviously adjusting to, to being full time as well. So niggles along the way and a couple of big instances, but we're uh, we're managing and the, the players are really doing well, rehab wise. Yeah, I was I was just wondering about that actually about the, the people moving from part time to full time. There's obviously a big big emphasis in pre-season on physical fitness more than football skill I guess um, and I'd wondered if there'd been any impacts from that. No yeah we monitor it closely the guys that have come from semi-professional level and, and come into the professional setting. Uh, Clarkie's got all of the sort of the data and we and we sort of collate that day by day and week by week to see if there's any trends and any deficits that correlate with with injuries and, and, and sub suboptimal performance. Um, and we just have to keep communication lines open and, and if players are fatiguing and so on they need to be honest and open and, and tell us so we can we can manage their capacity and load. Right and how's all that working? I mean, are you able to draw inferences and patterns and things from the analysis? Yeah definitely, you build a relationship, you get to know people's sort of markers of fatigue, whether their mood drops off, whether their performance on the training ground is, is affected and then whether that takes tallies over into the, the, the match days. So. Yeah, we sort of, it, it's subtle nuances that we need to try and pick up on. But um, yeah, I think we're doing a, a reasonable job. And I think that reflects in the fact that Gaffer's got a headache every every week in picking a team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we talked with him about that earlier this morning, actually. And he said, uh, I thought that he would never, ever be interested in data from GPS vests and so on. And he said he would have to admit that he had warmed to them and that they do produce some useful and interesting data. I d yeah, I mean, we're um, we're probably described as new school. Obviously, Gaff has been yeah, in the game a long yeah. time, and then we come along and we say we've learnt this at school and, and been educated with this methodology and so on. And, and you can and get yeah, these tools now. Exactly that, and it, and it, and it is helpful. It's not the be-all and end-all, but it's an, it's an added asset that can sort of distinguish certain variables that are really important at this level and any detail that can give us a slight advantage and stop injuries from happening, which is crucial for yeah. my department, um, is massive. So yeah, grateful to Clarkey. He's very, very good with the numbers and the data and um, very grateful to, uh, to have a team that's willing to use it and, and utilize it. Yeah, I'm sure Ian Dyer is very receptive to it and interested in it. Big time, yeah. I think he's, Ian's really, really forward thinking and, and he's willing to give things a go and then we just let the process be and, and see if it's helpful or if it hinders things. Okay, uh, let's talk about a couple of players. George Oakley, how's he doing? He's out of his boot now, I understand. He is, he is teetering out of the boot now. He's <laughs> flirting with it now. Yeah, he's had, a, he's had a hell of a long run. It's been about six, seven weeks now, so he's done really well and doing really, really well. Um, he's been in a cast, so he was initially in a cast for two weeks post-op. He then transferred from a cast to a boot non-weight bearing so that's really really tough so it's the added things like you lose your independence he can't drive right. so he's heavily reliant on his network around him he can't get into the training grounds as often as he'd like because he hasn't got transport so it's those little things that i think we forget it's one thing not being able to play it's another thing not being able to just nip up the shops or go and have a social or whatnot so he's handling it very very well he's now on the last sort of leg of not being in a boot and he'll, uh, he'll be ready to, to crack on and do some really sort of bit more dynamic conditioning in the, in the coming weeks. Brilliant. And uh, is it possible to have any sort of rough estimate about when he might be, let's just say, full-time training rather than match play? In, in a picture-perfect world where everything in rehab is aligned and his body responds beautifully, we're looking at about 12 weeks to 14 weeks from now. Right. Um, but picture perfect yeah, is not a reality is it so I don't want to put any pressure under George whatsoever he's dealing with it and and been fantastic with all of the bits that we've thrown at him so far um, the progression will be it'll be great for him in the next couple of weeks and then we just take it week by week let his body adapt and and see where we are come sort of January right I did see him at a game a couple of weeks ago and he seemed very cheerful 
he's 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 been brilliant and when he's at the training ground I think it really lifts everyone as well because we all know the trauma that he's been through and, and how difficult it is to deal with those sort of things and he's here lifting everyone up after yeah. maybe a bad result or two so he's um he's been absolutely fantastic and, and a real boost for us right and one other I think we can talk about because Douse tells us that he's now properly fit is Jordan Maguire Drew what's been the problem with him uh, so Jordan had a, an innocuous one, it was a training ground incident where he's just planted and his knee's gone one way and his foot's gone the other. Um, he was really, really fortunate that we didn't disrupt any of the, the big ligaments in the knee, but he did niggle a smaller ligament. So he, we had to take him out, um, he did a lot of hydrotherapy, so that sort of pull work to try and get the, the body working but without the load. Um, and then he done some aggressive dynamic stuff here with me. And he's, he's absolutely flying. He's been brilliant. Um, the fact that the starting 11 have been brilliant as well has meant that it's sort of scuffered his return. But <laughs> he's hot on people's heels and he's putting pressure on people, which is enhancing the team's performance. So he's doing what a good good player does and, and puts pressure on, on people around him. Fantastic. Um, is it possible that a bit of a rest did him some good? Uh, you can always time a rest. The problem with it is, is, is resting when you're told to rest and you're in good health is mm. one thing and resting because your body's not performing is another. So you've got the psychological aspects of being injured which is never particularly uh, healthy if you can avoid it. So he's, um, he's been brilliant. He's done all of the rehab. He's, he's very, very fit, very strong and got a hell of a mindset for doing things regularly and, and at a high intensity. So we're looking forward to, to having him return when he gets the opportunity. Fantastic. And finally, anybody else we can usefully hear anything about in terms of um, injuries or fitness? Or no, do you know what? Again, touch wood. Um, we're all right. We're okay. Like a, a couple of dead legs and, and things like that that we can manage out in, inside 72 hours. A um, little bit of illness went through the camp, which, which we've managed and, and people have, have dealt with that. But apart from that, they're all trivial things, things that can be solved pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, I don't want to tempt fate too much, but no. the boys are in a good place. And that was going to be the last question, but you used this phrase, dead leg. So I'm going to take the opportunity to ask you, what is a dead leg? Okay, dead leg uh, is basically an internal bleed. Okay, so you get a scab if you graze your skin or get an abrasion, that sort of thing. It's basically the same thing, but internally. Um, there's different vari varieties of it. Um, you get them in the muscle and you get them between the muscular fibers. Um, and depending on which one is dependent on how long and how severe it can be. But in general, it's just an impact injury that causes a bleed in the muscle and it just needs time to stop bleeding and then to, to settle and get your range of movement back. Brilliant. I've lasted all these years without knowing exactly what that was from the okay. biological point of view and now you've explained it perfectly. Simple. Thank you very much for your time this morning Wonderful. and thanks for the update. Cheers, Holmesy. Thanks, Ed. Please remember to like and subscribe to Woking Football Club.